If you want to know how to get better performance out of Ecamm Live uh, running on an older Mac or even a modern Mac really, <laughs> then these top 10 tips are for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and in this video we're going to be looking at the uh, my top 10 tips for getting better results out of Ecamm Live running on an older Mac but as I say these are sometimes I guess good best practices whatever Mac you're on really. Uh, now it's no secret because I've mentioned it before in some of my other videos that I am actually working on a technically obsolete 2013 MacBook Pro. <laughs> so eight years old and it's still uh, going strong really. I'm sure it could be a lot quicker. I know everyone's all about the M1 uh, Max at the moment uh, but I'm kind of still holding out for the 16 inch laptop to come out with the M series chip in it. But until then I'm soldiering on with my uh, original MacBook and this has been actually uh, really surprising to me exactly how smooth Ecamm Live runs on it even though it is as I say technically obsolete. <laughs> I uh, originally went down the OBS route when I started uh, having to make videos for a uh, work related project and uh, yeah basically my computer couldn't handle OBS and it uh, ground to a halt on many an occasion and I just wasn't able to produce the sort of videos that I wanted to be able to produce. Whereas Ecamm Live has solved that process or th that uh, problem rather and uh, you can tell that there's obviously a lot of uh, very careful consideration gone into the programming of Ecamm Live and the developers have done a great job at making it run efficiently so that it will indeed still support uh, laptops or computers as old as mine and even older still. But there are a few things that you can do to help it along and give it a bit more of a fighting chance at uh, running smoothly and so that is the purpose of this video today. I'm going to talk about my uh, top 10 tips but like I say these aren't necessarily just for older Macs, they are equally as important for even if you're running on a newer map, Mac as well. So consider them my top 10 best practices for running uh, Ecamm Live. So number one, the first one that I would like to talk about is, look at that, I've even rolled out the fancy graphics. <laughs> the first one is to close any apps that you aren't going to be using during your production. I know it sounds obvious but these consider this sort of like a checklist to go through as well and the best way to uh, have checklists is to have them cover absolutely everything. Incidentally I did also do a video about my uh, sort of pre production checklist and pre going live checklist so I'll link to that video in the description as well and uh, that includes some of these things in here as well actually but here I've expanded it to another uh, few things that you can do to help as well. So yes close any apps that you're not going to be using in your production go down to the dock and make sure you haven't got any uh, processor hawking applications uh, still running away there that you aren't going to be needing. Essentially we just want to free up as much of the processor and uh, memory capacity as we can uh, to, as I say, give Ecamm Live a bit of a better chance. Next, on a similar subject, is make sure you have also closed down any menu bar applications or background processes you have. Sometimes you may have looked in the dock and cleared everything out and have only even Ecamm Live running uh, but there can still be other processes that are running up in your dock uh, sorry in your menu bar. Now I also did another video <laughs> there's going to be a lot of links to videos in here I can tell uh, but this was all about the uh, five menu bar apps that I recommend for people who are uh, producing videos or live streaming and there's a couple in there that are, I would recommend so one of those is called uh, I nearly forgot it then, trip mode. <laughs> and this allows you to actually limit what applications have access to the internet or bandwidth to network uh, because that's the other thing. You don't want something uh, just firing up halfway through your presentation deciding. Uh, I'm talking about things like uh, iCloud Sync, Dropbox, OneDrive, those sorts of things. If they kick in halfway through your presentation and decide that they're going to start syncing your uh, files and folders and things like that, then that can affect performance. So an application like Trip Mode is a great application uh, to uh, help with that. And I'll leave a link to the video I did all about Trip Mode and those other four menu bar apps in uh, the description as well. Next, 
Another thing that I do is I actually adjust the resolution of my screen. So currently I've got my 15 inch MacBook Pro, which is normally on as uh, bigger resolution as you can get it or smaller resolution, whichever it is, so that everything looks small on the screen with lots more pixels. Uh, and then this is running into a 43 inch Philips uh, 4K monitor. So uh, I actually changed the resolution of my 4K monitor to uh, 1920 by 1080 instead. I do that for a couple of reasons. My feeling is it's not actually driving as big a screen. Uh, and But also the reason is when I do my screen sharing, uh, then it's not going to look so small on the, uh, on the screen, which I'll show you in a moment when I actually go into demo mode. But I think that that also helps with the uh, overall speed and the uh, processor usage as well. So having shut down all of our apps <laughs> and things that we don't need, uh, the next thing to do is uh, I'm going to talk about opening things because if you are going to be demoing a piece of software or there is a piece of software that you're going to need during your production, it's also good to get into the habit of actually getting that open before you start. And the reason is often when you start a piece of software, there will be a sort of spike in processor usage as it loads everything up that it needs to do. And so, yes, just making sure that you have already got the uh, application that you're going to use in your presentation or your production make sure those are all open in advance of starting number five still on opening things up again if you are going to be showing people websites or things like that going to be doing any demos where you are referring to websites it's always best to actually get those queued up in advance and that again cuts down on those network calls and uh, also on any uh, processor usage by safari or google chrome or whatever you're doing uh, actually uh, using up a processor in order to load those pages so get those open in advance if possible Number six is if you are actually uh, going to websites to download things, I'm talking about me in a lot of these because I do do demos where I go to a, a website, for example, download a bit of uh, graphics or something like that to incorporate in an overlay demonstration. So sometimes what I will do there uh, when I remember, and this is a best practice that I sometimes forget to do, <laughs> but it is to actually sort of pre-download anything that I'm going to be demonstrating. So then I can show the process of how to actually go through and get to the download, for example, but then have already actually pre-downloaded it. And then you're not waiting for any downloads. And also, again, you're not having the processor kick in to do that. So just downloading any uh, any content from the internet that you're going to uh, be showing and then this also goes the same for any files or things like that get the actual files opened up in advance if possible too so the next one is actually we're going to come on to things that are within ecamm live itself and so for this i am going to go into demo mode and you'll see how even though i'm on my 4k monitor <laughs> i have actually changed it to 1920 by 1080. Uh, it looks a little bit big to me but it should make it a lot easier for you to see on the screen so in uh the preferences of ecamm live if we just come to here uh, in the preferences here what we can see is uh, I've just inadvertently, I pressed the wrong button and I just ended the recording. So I'm gonna have to actually edit this together, but actually fortunately, all I'm gonna do is just join the two files and uh, hopefully avoid any editing software. <laughs> so uh, press the wrong button on my stream deck, Never mind. So uh, what we need to do is if we come into the video section of the preferences and then somewhere in here, we should see, actually it is in the general tab, Right at the bottom, we have this uh, option that you can check, check, which says use discrete graphics card for main screen. So uh, this uh, boosts performance, as it says here, by driving uh, the main screen through your uh, graphics card. Uh, and this increases performance, but it draws more power and um, could cause your fans to turn on. And this takes effect at your next launch of Ecamm Live. So uh, do make sure that is checked. Uh, my fans are always on. <laughs> my, my mic is so old that they kick in anyway. Uh, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. And also I use uh, Audio Hijack Pro to uh, Audio Hijack rather i keep calling it audio hijack pro it's uh, not been called that for years uh, but i use that to actually cancel out the noise from my uh, shaw mv7 microphone and uh, i'll leave a link to the video i did all about how to uh, do that as well but so yes that is just to make sure that that one is in fact uh, in uh, checked in the preferences so coming out of demo mode for a moment 
And the uh, next one is to uh, just think about the amount of graphics that you're actually using in your overlays. Uh, so I do tend to use a, a fair amount of graphics, but not too much. So things like that, the uh, <laughs> little numbers and things like that I have for this uh, top 10, uh, it doesn't seem to tax it too much really, but it is just something to be aware of. If you are, for example, having an overlay with uh, uh, video running, continuously in the background something like that then that is just something that's obviously going to take some level of processing power to run that and then also to capture that too in terms of the recording so think about how you may want to uh, minimize uh, too much graphics going on in your presentations but like I say I've not really had any issues with uh, the level of graphics that I have in mind albeit uh, not very much <laughs> uh, so the next thing is uh, to uh, I would say if I queue up my last number <laughs> number nine or second to last it is to actually run through all of your scenes once you've opened up ecamm live and what i mean by that is if you've got scenes like this uh, sort of countdown scenes that i've got here with these uh, animations in uh, what i have found is that uh, sometimes if you've just opened up ecamm live as a sort of uh, freshly opened program uh, then sometimes the first time that you activate scenes that have graphics in them it will take a, a few frames for it to actually catch up with itself and it's almost like it is buffering the video uh, I don't know the technically this is true or not but anecdotally what I have found is it will um, just uh, occasionally skip a few frames and there'll be a bit of uh, stuttering in the uh, the delivery of the animation however if I have just cycled through all of my different animated frames uh, before actually starting the production then when I click the button then it seems to just come in pretty seamlessly he says waiting for the next scene there we go <laughs> and that one <laughs> did seem to stutter a little bit but there you go uh, so the final one number 10 is um, obviously we're trying to reduce the uh, processor usage that we've got so if you are doing anything where you are running a presentation or something like that I did a video uh, yesterday in fact was probably the last video I released or last but one I can't remember uh, but it was all about different ways that you can uh, bring your slides from keynote and things like that into your Ecamm live presentations and so I do this when I'm uh, creating course material or also when I'm just on zoom calls or things like that for work uh, and so one thing you can bear in mind is if you can have your slides coming in from an external device again it's just going to reduce the workload on your computer and personally I find that workflow of keeping things separately actually works a lot better for me as well anyway I don't uh, end up thinking I'm advancing a slide in keynote whereas actually I'm advancing a scene in Ecamm live or something like that so that was the uh, number 10 is to try and run as much from an external device as possible and bear in mind this could be an, uh, you could be running uh, a uh, secondary computer if you've got an even older Mac lying around <laughs> or it could be from an iPad or even if you're running keynote slides you can actually even run them from your iPhone as well so just look for ways to basically offload processes from your main Ecamm machine. Well, I hope you have found those top 10 tips useful. And if you have, don't forget to go down and like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever I make any more videos. But don't go anywhere just yet because I've got more great videos coming up next. And I'll leave a link to my Ecamm Live playlist just there on the bottom as well. Have a great day.